Now, what I can do is I just tap the record button. It wants to record it onto track one because I haven't told it to move up a track. And I can now play it back. And though it will play, it loses all the sounds from the original recording. Which is really odd. Then reload it back into the S1000V's user song category. Let's put a multi-track recording together. And we've now captured our first track. And this time I'm gonna take it to record on track number two. Sample of Mr. Sinistar himself. I am Sinistar. But obviously there's no editing. So it's very handy to have if you've got a flash of inspiration. Oh, no. Yes. We can then load both these MIDI files into a DAW, and you've got track one, track two, track three, track four, and track five. And you can pan them as well. Am I sure? Yes, I am. Recording. The S1000V can record and playback your playing and performances, albeit as a digital real-time MIDI style recorder, rather than capturing the actual audio. Now, if I'm honest, I found the recording section in the S1000V to be the most confusing and non-intuitive to use out of all the sections in this keyboard. Plus, I've had a hard time getting my head around some of its workflow and real-world practical application especially in its saving and loading of files in the MIDI file format. However, even though it's not a feature that is of much use to me, and it was not in any way a factor in me wanting this keyboard, I do want to try and cover it so those that might need a recording feature can see what they are getting. The S1000V has two ways of recording what you play. You have easy record slots that can be found via the main menu and in the song bank. And these are numbers 11 and 12. Number 11, which is tone record, and number 12, which is rhythm record. You also have five multi-track slots too. And these are 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. And these can all be found in the song memory bank. Easy record number 11, the tone rec slot, doesn't allow the recording of any rhythms being played, whereas Easy Record number 12, the rhythm record slot, does record the rhythm being played, as well as upper tones, splits, and layers. After recording, both Easy Record 11 and 12 slots can then be copied to an empty multi-track slot as a system track. But as the number 11 tone rec slot, doesn't allow recording of rhythms and only system tracks can have rhythms in them. I'm not sure what exactly is the purpose of the number 11 rec slot. Regardless, let me show you how to use the number 12 rhythm rec slot to capture a brief live performance being played. I'm going to use my Sinistar song that has a drum rhythm, a split keyboard with arpeggiated bass line in the lower section, with the Sinistar samples and also vocal synthesis in the upper section. To capture my Sinistar song, I'm, I've already got it set up in a registration, which is registration 3.3, which we're already in. And at this point, it's all ready to go. The, I've set the keyboard up to play this song, or what I'm about to play. I can just simply tap record, take it into the record standby mode, or if I press and record hold, it gives me some extra options. And one of them is it's now actually defaulting to the multi-track, 13, which I don't want to do, I wanted to record in the rhythm record track. And now what I can do is I just tap the record button and it takes me to the standby mode. And I'm also going to engage sync start. So the drums will start as soon as I hit the key. So let's give it a little shot. Thank you. 
And after that very rough recording, just tap the record button. And we've now recorded that whole performance into slot number 12, the rhythm record, the easy record. And I can now play it back. I make, swapping from instrument to the vocal synthesis lyrics, and the fill-ins, and a filter sweep, it records all the, the any changes I make to the, uh, the, the assignable knobs, pitch bend is also recorded. But you get the idea. So it's very handy to have if you've got a flash of inspiration and a great idea in your head and you've got nothing else to record with, you can you can knock it down. You can knock down a recording very quickly and easy with this easy record feature. At this point, if I'm happy with the recording, I could simply leave it as it is, or if I want to build on it further, I can copy it to a multi-track slot and it gives me the option here you see this as MTR copy, multi-track copy. I press that and it gives me the option to move it to the first available, first free multi-track slot, um, which we have in the, in the song section. But I'm not going to do that for now because we're going to work on some other things. So I'm going to say no for that. I can also save it either in Casio's proprietary file format that can only be read and used by the S1000V and possibly other Casios, or save it in the MIDI file format. If saved in Casio's own file format, I can load this file back in again to easy record rhythm record slot 12, that one right there, at a later date and it will play back exactly as it was recorded. If I save it in the MIDI file format, I can only reload it back into the S1000V by the user song category. And for some reason, it will play back with different drum sounds. I will demonstrate this to you by saving the recording and choosing the MIDI file format. Okay, so if I want to save this recording, I go to menu, then I have to go to media, where are you, media. I want to say save, and I go to song, I've got rhythm. I want to save the rhythm record, and I'm going to save this as MIDI. Am I saving it as MIDI? Yes. So I'm going to call it. Let me change the actual name so I know which one it is. Because I'm going to do a few things to make it clearer what's going on. Because MIDI is sitting MIDI, and I'm going to say confirm. I can say yes, and it will save it into my flash drive, which I've got already plugged in. Okay, that's saved, so I click OK. And now I'm going to go back, back. This time I'm going to load the media. In the media section, again, press load. And you would have thought song, rhythm, which is where it came from, and at the moment, so I can't find it because it doesn't recognize it as a rhythm track. But I have to have to go back and I now have to go to user song. Now we have a Cine MIDI, so I can select it and I'm going to put it to the first slot with one of the user songs in the song menu. But these are the user songs that you can see user song there. I'm going to select that and overwrite whatever that one rhythm MIDI was. That's it. it wants confirmation to replace what was rhythm MIDI in slot one. I say yes. And click OK. So we now have in slot one a user song, which is the MIDI file of the recording we just made. However, what happens is when we play this, is it doesn't have the same drums for some reason. Let me show you. I press start. Oh, because I'm in the load section, sorry. So when I'm back into the song menu, now I go back to number one, use a song, Cine MIDI, and I press play. Let's have a listen to it. Now you can 
can hear this pretty much. It's, it's, it's what I recorded, the actual the notes I was playing and the things I was changing on the keyboard. But the drums are different because the drums should sound like this. Which is a very, very different sounding drum set. And there's no way you can change it. And at least I don't know how you can change it. So and I don't know why it does that. Why when you save it as a MIDI file and load it in as a MIDI recording, or as a, or as a user song rather, it changes the sound of the drums, which is very strange. So what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to show you the difference between saving a, a one of these one of your tracks, one of your recordings as a proprietary format and the MIDI format. Because this time I'm going to what I'm doing. I'm going to save it. I need to go to menu and media. Okay, I want to go to save song rhythm rhythm record. But I'm going to save it as the RRF, which is rhythm record something format, which is Casio's own file format. So this time we're going to call it, what am I going to call it this time? We're going to call it Sydney RRF. Okay, press confirm. Uh, sure, yes, I'm sure. And okay. So what am I going to do now? I'm going to go back go in the media section, exit. We're now in the song section as well, with the song memory area with the rhythm record. Let me just play it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear it to show you that I got rid of it. So I've now got rid of that recording. It says rhythm rec, but I can play it. There's nothing there. So once again, I go back to the media. I want to go to load a song. This time I can use a rhythm. And oh, I actually spelled, I spelled Shinny RIF, but it, it's the, for the, that's the track I just saved. I select it and it wants to take it to the rhythm recording. I say yes. Click OK. And we now have, I go back, 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 exit. We're back into the song area or the songs. Slots. So there's the rhythm record, which I just loaded back in after clearing it. I saved it, cleared the memory, and now I've reloaded it back in, and it should play exactly as it did before. Which it does. And once again, if I go back to the MIDI version I saved, the different drums. It makes no sense why it does that. As you can hear, a rhythm recording saved in Casio's own RRF file format will load and play exactly as it was recorded. But if you save a rhythm recording choosing the MIDI file format and then load it back into the S1000V, it will play back with different drum sounds. There is actually a purpose of saving an S1000V recording in the MIDI file format. As you can then load the saved track into any MIDI player and even into a DAW. But you would have to assign different virtual instruments to make the sounds play. could also edit and make changes to it within the DAW. Then resave it as a MIDI file. Then reload it back into the S1000V's user song category. And though it will play, it loses all the sounds from the original recording and plays the track back with completely different instruments. Therefore, it's somewhat questionable 
as to why the S1000V offers the MIDI file format for saving its files, unless it's purely just for exporting them into a DAW. That's the Easy Record mode covered. We can now look at the Multitrack Record mode that uses slots 13 to 17. For a multitrack, we have the option of copying a previously recorded tone or rhythm track from slot 11 or 12 to an empty multitrack slot to use as a system track, and then we can add additional tracks using upper one tones, or we can build a track completely from scratch. Let's try building a track from scratch. Let's put a multitrack recording together. And to do this, I've already got the keyboard set up with, uh, with my song. And I'm going to do multiple parts, or I can use one track for one part, one instrument, one drum track, one bass line, one instrument, one vocal synthesis, so, and so on. And so th this is already set up, this registration for that. But if I press and hold the record button, and it's already taken us straight into the first available multi-track recording, because uh, track 13 is currently empty. And as you can see, it says multi-track. We can go into standby by just tapping the record button. And we're now in the standby mode. And it's actually telling us that it's going to record to track S, which is the system track. I just want to show you here, I can change that by pressing and holding record. No, I can't. Press it, hold it again. Oh, sorry, it was already there. When it says record track, I can do this and I can actually change which track to record to in the multi-track, which is number 13, slot 13. But we're gonna to record to the system track. And, and I could actually include the bass line and layer tones and an arpeggiator and a lower section in the system track, but I just want to keep the track separate for the time being, just to give you an idea of how to put a multiple part track together. And I'm going to be using the future disco part and uh, we're already ready it works with the record, so it's on standby. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do kind of four bars of each part of my song. So each time, then I'm gonna put in a fill-in, and then each time I do a fill-in, I'm gonna bring in another part. So let me just build it up. So I'm gonna start off with the drum track, and this is gonna go in the system track, and this is the future disco. I press start, and it will start recording. to end with an ending. And that's the drum part put down. So I just tap the record button and we've now captured our first track in our multi-track. We can have up to four, five solo tracks and one system track. And the system track could have multiple parts, but we've just got the drum part in the system track. So next thing I've got to do, I've got to find the bass line, which I'm going to use as synth bass nine. Arpeggiator is switched on. And I'm going to bring this one in one or four bars after the drum start. So we're also got to go, got to go to record, tell it which track to record to. Which is not that one. There we go. So now I can go to record track. And I want to record it to solo one. And I, put the, I can play, press record start, which will trigger the recording, or I can hit the key, but I don't want to hit the key because otherwise the arpeggiator will start. So I'm just going to hit record start. I've got a four measure count in. I'm going to get ready to play my arpeggiated bass. Got the bass starting. Filter sweeping just for good measure. So we've now captured our bass part. So we're going to record next. We're going to put a bit of vocal synthesis in here. So I hit the tone button. And the vocal synth is 103. Is it? Oh, no. Yes, 103. Here we go. Where is it? 103, which is Hail Sinistar. 
So we've now got that in place. I can now tap record into the standby mode. But again, you see on the screen, it wants to record it onto track one because I haven't told it to move up a track. Press and hold record. Then select record track. And this time I'm going to tell it to record on track number two. We're all ready to go and I can press record start because I'm not going to be bringing in the the vocal or this, this part of the track to about three bars in. So here we go. The bass line coming in. start the recording there because that's all I'm going to be putting in of that part and we're now also going to add some Sinistar sample the sample of Mr. Sinistar himself I am Sinistar I'll go back to instrument and I've got to find out there's 80 let me just check my notes over there 802 802 which is it's a sampling drums but it just simply means the individual samples so I put individual samples of Mr. Sinistar on here I am Sinistar which is what I want and go back tap the record button again and I'm going to make sure that I'm, I select the right track so we're on the previous track and we get to record onto solo 3 same thing again I could press record start and then I'll bring it in at the point I want it to start recording of that particular part. Mr. Sinistar in the recording as well. And I'm going to add one more track. I'm going to bring in an, a nice little sort of synth pad sound. So I'll go back to tone. And the synth tone I want is 511. Go and find 511. Where are you? Somewhere. There we are. EDM pad. Tap record. Press and hold record. And I've got to select record track. Otherwise, we record onto the, the track we've just recorded, and we're going to add solo four, which is track four. And same thing again, I just hit the record start, because we're not going to be bringing this track, this part in until later on in the recording. Drums. our five parts multi-track now recorded now, it's a bit rough because i'm just trying to demonstrate it to you for the video and i can now play it back to you see what it sounds like with all the parts recorded with these individual tracks and i also want to point out you have the option of mixing you can go in there and then you can change all the volumes you can also change these volumes or change the mixing things in real time so what you got if you got if you're using a system track which has upper one, upper two, and a lower split and a rhythm, then you can independently adjust all those volumes. And you got track one, track two, track three, track four, and track five. Those are the solo tracks. So you it's kind of a handy, good little, quite quite powerful what you can do. And you can also got pan. You can pan them as well. So it's it's pretty basic. And when I say powerful, it's more basic than powerful. But you have that option to do that, but obviously there's no editing. But let me just play back so you can hear what it's going to sound like. Multi track number 13.
that's how you can build a multi-track recording from scratch using the S1000V's multi-track recording feature. As with the Easy Recording Tone 11 and Rhythm 12 tracks, we can now save this multi-track recording using Casio's own proprietary file format or save it as a MIDI file. Just the same as with the Easy Recordings, if we save it in Casio's own file format, we can load it back into a multi-track slot at a later date and it will play exactly as it was recorded. If we save it as a MIDI file, a big caveat here is that it will only save the system track information if there is a system track in use. And you can see this in, on page 255 of the user guide. It won't save the additional solo tracks within the multi-track as well, which is really odd. To export the additional solo tracks, you have to delete the system track from the multi-track recording, leaving only the solo tracks. Then, when you save it as a MIDI file, you will have the solo track recorded information, but no system track. To get all of this into a, a DAW, it appears that you have to save two versions of the same multi-track recording, one with the system track and one without the system track. I'm now going to save our multi-track recording and I'm going to make two versions of it, one with the system track and one without, or rather one which will just be the system track and then one will, will just be the solo tracks. And to do this, I click on the menu button and then I go to the media section again. Where are you? Right there. Go to save and go to song, multi-track. And what am I going to do here? I go select, I want to save it. And I'm going to save this one as a MIDI file. If I save it as the MRF, which is Casio's proprietary file format, it will save and load back exactly as it was recorded. But I can't edit it. I can't use it anywhere else except another Casio. But I'm going to do MIDI because we're going to be looking at that. And I'm going to change the name. I'm going to call it, what am I going to call it? Cine System. So we know it's a Cine's got the system track. Now I'm going to hit confirm and we will save it to our flash drive. Am I sure? Yes, I am. Now that's saved, so I'm going to click OK. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to go back. I need to go back to, I've got to get out of the media. Exit, go back to the multi-track. I'm going to copy, copy this. This is what you should do. You can actually copy the song. So I'm going to do that because, because I'm going to delete the system track just in case something goes wrong, then I've got a copy I can revert back to. So I can copy this entire, entire multi-track from number 13. So I'm copy to slot number 14. So I'm going to say select, yes. Am I sure to 14? Yes, I am. And it's complete. Okay, so that's just a fail safe. I'm going to go back to number 13. And now get to manage again. And now I can go to a track clear. And I can select which track I want to get rid of. And I'm going to get rid of the system track so I can save the, the solo tracks. So I'm going to track system. Yes, select. Am I sure? Yes, I am. And that's got rid of it. And we can see now on the display, the system track has disappeared. We've only got the four solo tracks. So now I can save this multi-track as a MIDI file. And it's the same process again. Go to MIDI. Go and find media. Go to save. Song. Multi-track. And we have number 13. I'm going to select it. Save as MIDI. And I'm going to change this one. I'm going to call it Cine, Cine Gnosis. So bear with me while I change the name. Okay, we've now called it Cine Gnosis because this is a Cine with no system file, Cine Star Song. Okay. Click Confirm. Am I sure? Yes, I am. Saving it as a MIDI file. And that now saved. We now have two MIDI files of this song. One MIDI file has the system information or system track information only. The other has the solo track information only. And if we wanted to, 
We can then load both these MIDI files into a DAW and with some rearranging of the tracks, merge them together. As with the easy recording track we covered earlier, you'll have to assign VST instruments to get them to play from within your DAW, unless you connect up the S1000V via MIDI and use it as a sound source. However, using the S1000V's built-in MIDI recorder to capture multi-track recordings for use within a DAW seems very convoluted and unconventional, plus you still have the same issue of not being able to then edit or modify the tracks and bring the MIDI recording back into the S1000V. My impression of the recording feature is that though it is nice to have, and it does give you the ability to quickly get down some ideas if you only have the S1000V with you, it is somewhat convoluted in its workflow and has very odd handling of MIDI files. It is also rather limited and should not be considered as a full arranger or workstation type of sequencer recorder. It has no editing features other than the copying and pasting of a whole track or a whole song, plus no quantizing. And though you can export your recordings as MIDI files to load into a DAW or MIDI player, the S1000V can't properly load back in these same MIDI files that it exports. The loading and saving of MIDI files by the S1000V is handled very strangely, and you almost have to wonder what is the actual point in offering the MIDI file format as an option when a multi-track recording can't save the system and solo tracks in one file, and a slot 12 rhythm recording can only be loaded back into the S1000V via the user song category and plays back with different drum sounds. Maybe I've missed something here, but it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. It also seems a bit of a missed opportunity as allowing owners to edit their S1000V captured MIDI recordings externally via a DAW or MIDI editor, then saving that edited MIDI recording and re-importing it back into the S1000V for playback the way Casio's own proprietary file formats can be loaded back in, this would have got round the having no editing functions in the keyboard. Casio should really think about offering a comprehensive computer-based data editor for the S1000V that would allow greater MIDI editing and file conversion features from their proprietary format to more universal formats and vice versa. Additionally, a data editor could also give you the ability to adjust all of the many S1000V parameters from a computer-based app plus the ability to customize and create your own rhythms. They offered very useful data editors for their XW synths, for example, so it's not as if they've never done this before. Overall, both the easy record and multi-track recording features of the S1000V are great to have as a sketchpad for quickly capturing ideas on the fly. But for more comprehensive multi-track recording, editing and arranging, especially if using MIDI, I strongly recommend recording the S1000V directly into a computer DAW instead. Let's look at the S1000V's MIDI capabilities. So we see straight away that the computer has recognized the USB. I should have got another chair really, shouldn't I? No, what am I talking about? I'm gonna play something now on the keyboard. This is the MIDI we just recorded. Let's have a listen to that bag. It's probably gonna sound pretty awful. I can now pick any one of these controllers. So we're only sending MIDI and assign any of these knobs to it from the S1000V to my the DAW. And what I'm going to show you next. Where am I gonna show you next? Pitch bend. Um, I don't think I'm going to win a Grammy for that one. 